Hey everyone, Sam McKay here. I just want to do something a little bit different in this particular video, and I want to go through a real world example and 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 sort of just go through logically how you can create reports in lots of different scenarios. And I might do this a little bit more often. Um, I still, uh, you know, I, I think a lot of the examples out there, and, and that's the same with um, what we've we've done in the past, is, is a lot of it is using generic information. And that is important and, and really necessary in a lot of cases just for continuity of content. But I think this is a good avenue to just discuss things that are a little bit different. Like um, in this particular example, I'm, I want to go into uh, transport and shipping and logistics type data and how you can use Power BI in this sort of environment with this sort of data set. And really, you know, in doing so, I want to just expand your mind in terms of what's possible. Power BI is 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 literally the best tool out there for any data, like literally any data. It does not have to just be, um, you know, a sales or a financial data set. It is literally anything can be done inside of Power BI. And I really want to showcase that today. Now, this is an example coming from one of our um, from one of our members, one of our Enterprise DNA members, part as part of the Power BI Challenge or a Power BI Challenge that we had recently. They designed this really compelling report. And what I want to do is I want to show you the insights that you can actually gather from this report. But then maybe just talk through like how I would attack it and maybe some differences to how I would do it. And then also some improvements that I think could be made um, to this particular model. And we'll just see how it goes. We'll just see how it goes over the next um, next 10 minutes or so, see how far we can get and uh, and then evaluate um, if there's more I can talk about or if I probably uh, talked about enough then. So let's jump into it. Now, the first thing that I really love about this report is the actual um, navigation experience. Now, this is pretty cool. And this just shows you, I mean, imagine this being on the web, right? This is just like a, a fully um, built out web application. It just feels like it when you sort of land on, it's, it's, it's like a, um, a GIF image where there's this sort of um, overlay aspect coming to it when you click on it. And so they've broken, um, the, the member's broken it down into four different um, analysis um, segments right and a lot of this is probably coming from um has probably is due to they thought this was the main segmentation that they could get from the data set right so if we click through into one of these segments like road here i get i then get taken to a different page that sort of gives me the insights about all of the different um uh shipping or the or, or transportation that is happening via road right so i think that's it's, it's a good place to start actually like when you're assessing any data set, you really want to try and understand the story that you're trying to tell like very, very quickly, right? Or you want to try and work that out. Um, and and so the story you tell can really change quite a lot depending on what you deem as your most important filters or your most important dimensions. In this particular case, the most important dimension was breaking up the way that um, breaking up the data in the way that it was actually transported. But another, you know, another way you could do it is it could be you could have done it from location. You could have done it by um, you could have not had those filters at all. Maybe you did it by like company or something like that. But in this case, it's, it's sort of like um, air, road, rail, ship, uh, water, right? And so um, that's the way that it's been decided here. And I think it flows well, right? And so what we get taken to is we get taken to different. Um, analysis based on the, this particular element or this particular segment in our reporting, right? And so within here as well, we have um, some analysis here, but then there's a navigation on the left hand side that we can click through as well, which I like as well. Just I, I like that that the navigation experiences that you can build inside of Power BI it makes it really compelling. And so we've got some other key information here around um, uh, what we've got: a, a direction, job branch. Uh, Inco, Inco term, which I'm not actually sure what, what that sort of stands for, but sort of just, you know, I guess when you're looking at transportation, you want to sort of understand, okay, what is the revenue, what is the profit, what is the margin, um, etc. And you can look at things over time, obviously, trends over time, like how is, how in this particular case, our profits uh, and some income and expenses there. But if we jump back to um, details about the actual shipping, we can find out the weight, the um, you know the, the 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 amount of shipments, those those sort of things. Okay, the the directions of the shipments, the origin, the destination, and these are the things that are great for anything to do with logistics, right? Anything to do with logistics, and shows the versatility of what we um, uh, what we can do with Power BI. Now, I want to jump back in here and just quickly 
um, run through how I sort of look at data sets, okay, and how and how potentially I would do this slightly differently. Because what has been done in this case is that the model has been kept very, very simple, okay. So uh, I, I love the fact they've used the waterfall technique where we've got our lookup tables up the top and our fact tables down the bottom. Um, we've got this, this is an odd one, we've got sort of like a one-to-one -one relationship on finance here. This isn't something I would generally do. I would probably leave this as sort of like a table by itself, but um, but uh, it, it's, uh, I would have to sort of look at that a little bit deeper. I want to I want to dive into, like I would really do this. I would try and figure out a different way. Like is there some way to um, maybe create a lookup table of the common, the common column here? So it looks like the common, the uh, the column which is related is ship shipment ID. So what I could do, let's have a look. Let's try to find it. So shipment ID. My what I would try and do is I would try and bring these two shipment ID columns together, merge them into one, or or append them and then remove duplicates, place that as a lookup table, and then create the relationship down from there. Create a one-to-many relationship from that column of unique values down to, down to here and then everything to do with that shipment could also like uniquely to do with that shipment could maybe also be placed up um, in, in a lookup table so that's one way you could do it but let's just have a look at what sort of shipping data looks like right so you know with when he, with any sort of logistics information you're going to have a line item like the 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 sort of transactional information is going to be really the id the, the shipment id right the the actual shipment and things that are going to stem from that actual shipment are sort of when when, um, when it left, where it left from, uh, and then where it went to, when it landed, so on and so forth. And then there's a lot of um, things that can derive out of, out of just that information. But the key here is obviously shipment ID. That's going to be our index inside of our fact table. Okay. And you'll see as we work along this table that this is this is actually a huge table, right? Even though the amount of rows is quite small 224 so there's 224 rows i i would guess that there's probably close to uh maybe 40 columns okay maybe 40 columns or so i think i can actually check this in here i can check this very quickly in here um no i was well off 121 121 maybe maybe it's been revised a little bit um in the query editor here before it got to here but that is way too many columns for a fact table right what you want to be doing with data sets like this is you want to be trying to break out the the um, the segments of information that make sense as lookup tables, as filtering tables. So um, things that I can identify pretty quickly that would be good um, tables for for like lookup tables. One would be locations, right? So you have um, like information on codes on where this started from and the country that it started from etc the destination you know you, you we really should have uh, a, potentially a table for origin countries and also destination countries uh, or with all of the uh, adjacent information to those we also could have a lookup table of consigners because there's if you look at if you look at this uh, look at these a lot of this information is exactly the same right so um, this is the code and then this is the name so this is always going to be the same um, and so do we in a lot of cases do we really need to have this iterated through many many times we could place this in a looked up look up table and turn it into um, a, a, a table with just sort of one unique index and then link that index back to here so we don't have like duplicates of information over and over and over again that's going to reduce the complexity in your model and also reduce the file size in this particular area and as we go along here, there's plenty of other things that we can do, like um, types of uh, types of goods. I believe is one um, clients. We could break that into a lookup table as well, uh, and and more like vessel. Um, and probably you can you could also do like types of types of delivery. This is where you could break out land, water, um, you know, air rail this is where you could break out um, that into a lookup table as well what i also am looking for here is the columns of numeric values right because this is where i'm going to create my measures so you see here that there's a a, a few measure, measures created probably in a model that i created i would create more but you'll see here that we've got a um, profit number so that's obviously an easy one um you know th th this is these are the sort of things that i pick up on really really quickly 
and I know, okay, I'm going to create measures on these. I'm going to create really simple measures. I'm going to create a profit um, calculation. Uh, and there should be, and there's some other calculations like weight um, and volume. Like I'm going to count these up. I'm going to just do simple sums and we're going to be able to filter these by all of these lookup table dimensions that we are creating, right? So obviously this model would look a little bit different. I would have lots, I would probably have maybe four or five more lookup tables up the top here, my lookup table layer, and flow those all the way, all, all down to here to respective indexes in the shipment table. I would also try and maybe create um, a new table that, that that brings together these, you know, I, I would generally not want these as two different tables. I would usually merge these into one table. Maybe I would merge them into one table. I know I said that I would maybe put shipment ID up in, as a lookup table as well, but maybe that doesn't make as much sense because, you know, it seems like this is maybe just able to be merged into this table. I mean, maybe we could simplify this table by extracting out all the sort of text dimensions into relevant lookup tables like, you know, like customers, um, destinations, um, uh, like uh, types of goods, you know, so on and so forth. For those sort of dimensions, they, they are lookup tables, right? Those are um, columns of unique values that we could then expand upon and create additional dimensions that relate to them, like categories and, um, and regions for locations, etc. Um, but all of the sort of calculated information, we want to be in this one, in a table in our fact table, in one fact table, so we can go and run our simple measures across it. So that's how you would really simplify this down. And that enables you to also expand on the analysis that you could that you do, like really, really quickly and easily. You know, being able to, to utilize um, time intelligence calculations, a whole range of DAX formula patterns, um, your know, ranking techniques, so on and so forth. They all derive from simplifying your model and um, and then being able to slice and dice the data intuitively and overlay those DAX formula patterns on top. And that's how you can get to some really um, quite a compelling analysis very, very quickly inside of Power BI. So, okay, so I think that I've, I've sort of given you a, a good overview of, of a different type of data set, right? And these are the sort of things that we've been looking to explore further you know, with our Power BI um, challenges that we've been running at Enterprise DNA. We want to get sort of a diversity of, um, uh, of uh, demos and, um, and um, challenges that you, know, you, where you can challenge yourself, really. Where you can challenge yourself. And uh, I think we've been, we've been doing that really successfully and some amazing reports have come about. Um, so if you want to check out some of these showcases, what I would recommend, um, just to dive into this a little bit more, um, is to is to jump on. So this is actually um, available to those with membership. You can actually download all of the PBIX files so you can dig into these a little bit deeper and, and, and maybe even repurpose these yourself if you're working in this sort of area. Um, but if you want to just have a review of, of what this actually looks like, um, in a, in a published to web version, I believe it's uh, this one here. You can actually have a play around with it in our showcase. So if you just go to the Enterprise DNA plat, um, website and go to um, Power BI Showcase uh, from there, this will navigate to um, you to here where we've got a whole range of um, really good examples for you to review. And we're adding to this all the time as well, by the way. So this, this could look a little bit different when you're watching this video. But yeah, I, I hope that you've enjoyed just going through something different here. I mean, there's... Um, you know, I, I, this particular report's been obviously built really well, and and what I would do is if I was, um, you know, if, if I was wanting to sort of repurpose this, I would, um, I would take this model, and then I would sub in my new data set, say in transportation field, and and really just um, benefit or or leverage off all of the logic that has been built into here um, around the navigation, the visualizations the dax formulas that are already being created but then but then um improve it improve it the way that i've discussed you know improve the model and then improve the organization and um and obviously um, and maybe calculations and logic that you that you want to actually see and um you know very quickly you can actually throw together great reports um you know just like this one okay i'm going to round off uh, thanks for thanks for tuning in hopefully hopefully you enjoy um enjoy our content and, and really get a lot out of it. Um, I think, uh, yeah, I've really enjoyed um, doing something a little bit different today, talking through a, a, a sort of real, um, real world example. So yeah, I'm definitely going to do a lot more of these in the future. Okay, take care. Look forward to next time. Hey, everyone. 
Thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the content covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website, plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best, take care.